Today we'll show you how to convert a 24 volt 2 amp hour cobalt power tool battery into a 12 volt 4 amp hour portable battery. Also has a flashlight that you can use to power a small and portable solar power system. Let's get started. So I'm in the process of building a small and portable off the grid solar power system that is complete with a solar panel, a charge controller, an inverter, and a 12 volt battery pack. The, the whole system has to be portable and small enough to fit into a backpack to carry around in the woods and the battery is the first thing that I need. And it has to be 12 volts because everything here is rated at 12 volts. 12 volt solar panel, 12 volt solar controller, and 12 volt inverter. Now I don't have a 12 volt lithium ion battery. I can make one myself from these cells. But it has to be a high discharge battery to handle the current from this inverter. And laptop cells like this cannot handle the current. Well, they can. But you have to put a lot of these in parallel. And that makes the battery pack too big and too heavy to be portable. And that's where this 24 volt power tool battery comes in. It's small and portable and it is powerful enough to handle the current. This inverter can throw at it. The only problem is that it is 24 volts. But I will turn it into a 12 volt battery so I can use it for my solar power system. So here's the inside of the battery pack. There are six 18650 cells connected in series. So my plan is I'm gonna cut it right in the middle where the series connection connect between these three cells and these three cells. There are no connection on the other side, just this connection right here. So I'm gonna cut it in half right here. This board can be gone. And then we're gonna have a 12 volt battery pack that is 3S and 2P. So 3S and then two of these three packs will be connected in parallel to make it 2P. So here it is. I just removed the BMS board from the battery. Now it's time to cut this connection here. Now cutting this connection you have to be really careful because the lithium ion cell they are right below this. You can see the green color plastic through that hole. That is the cell right below it. It's very close. Here you can see I pry it up and raised it one millimeter above the cell so it stays away from the cell that's more safe to cut so here it is cut and disconnected you can see the battery cell right underneath it so now I have two 12 volt battery packs one here and one here that's one and that's another one. So now I have to connect them in parallel. That means that positive terminal connected to positive terminal. Negative terminal has to be connected to negative terminal. And also this terminal here of this pack has to be connected to this terminal here of the other pack. Same for this. This terminal of this pack has to be connected to this terminal here on this pack. So they are connected like uh, diagonally. And that to that. On the top here, you see the metal tab sticking up with solder in it already. And it's gonna be very easy for me to solder and connect this terminal to this terminal. But I made a mistake and cut this metal tap here so now I have to solder way down here 
that is gonna be a small problem because this has to fit in the case has to fit back in the case and uh, that means I have to use flat wire otherwise it will stick out too much and uh, won't fit so here I have everything connected together of the positive terminal together of the negative terminal together and the other negative and positive terminal are connected together this one connected to this one and that's it and I also saw the two extra wire that goes from the positive terminal and the negative terminal that way I can solder my XT60 connector externally I'm almost done here and ready to put a cover on and I've soldered a balanced charging cable to the battery so I can balance charge the battery that's what it looks like here and the way I did it is so this cable has got four wires so you hold the cable this way from right to left the gray wire is going to go to the main negative terminal of the battery the blue wire is going to go to the positive terminal of the same battery the purple wire is going to go to the positive terminal of the second battery and the white wire is going to go to the main positive terminal of the battery I have just also installed a 12 volt 10 watt LED on the back of the battery and a switch inside here it's this switch it's just a push on switch I originally planned to install it on the top here I already drilled the hole it, uh, it goes in just fine but then it will stick out too much on the top and that uh, I might accidentally push a button and turn on the light and drain the battery out so I remove this plastic piece here and then install the switch inside here that way I can't push it accidentally and turn on the light when I don't need to so it's way in here the LED is mounted on an aluminum plate so just a thin piece of aluminum and it acts as a heat sink also I'm gonna install a resistor this is a 6 ohm resistor it's gonna be installed series and it's gonna go to the switch and then go to the positive terminal of the battery uh, that way I can lower the current a little bit uh, to uh, protect the LED from uh, too much current from the battery uh, so usually for this 12 volt LED for a 3S battery pack uh, a resistor between 5 ohm and 10 ohm uh, would be good enough all right, so here is the final product. You got the XT60 connector, and the voltage output is 12.39 volts. Also, I've got my balance charging cable. It's all nice and neat inside. That's the switch for the flashlight. And that's the uh, LED. Turn it on. Very, very bright. I'm gonna go outside and test how bright the LED is. We are in the dark now. Let's turn on the LED. Extremely bright is the LED. Very, very bright. off on very very bright light this is my next test I'm going to use a 410 watt 12 volt DC to AC inverter and I'm going to hook it up to a kilowatt meter also my uh, DC clamp to measure the output right so let's turn it on it's on now it's got a USB port here I want to see if it works 
so let's plug in my phone it's working it's charging my phone right now let's see how much it's charging my phone so my next test I got my jigsaw here it's plugged in the kilowatt outlet which plugs in the inverter and also I have my uh, DC amp meter I'm gonna cut this piece of wood here 2x4 see how much power I can get You see there, it works just fine. Let's check the battery voltage. 12.05 volt, 06 and rising. My next test, I just hooked it up to my 12 volt electric scooter. There we go. Let's see if it works. Here we go. Been riding about a mile. Let's check on the battery temperature. This stays really cool though. 18 degrees Celsius. Air temperature 14 degrees Celsius. So um, it's pretty cool. And also being a high discharge great 12 volt battery pack. I can hook it up to my uh, jumper cable and help jump start my battery if this battery dies. And of course, it's not going to be able to start the car on its own without the lead acid battery. Well, this one does. And I'm charging it. It can help boost and jump start this lead acid battery in case it dies or when it gets too cold. So I'm just going to throw it in the back of my car. It's good for camping and it's good for emergency. And have you noticed how clean my engine bay is? There's no more rat droppings and it smells great up here it's been two months so as you can see this battery has so many uses including a very bright flashlight but my main purpose of building this battery is for a small solar power system I need to have a battery that is powerful but small enough to carry in a backpack along with all of these next video i'm going to show you how i put everything together until then see you later